On this week's show, I will be talking about my blepharitis problem, exercising in the park, and cooking something nutritious in the kitchen. And I'll be keeping my smile in check with a visit to the dentist and finding out why sleep is so important. Run titles! Brushing our teeth twice a day not only keeps them clean, but protects us from gum disease and more serious conditions. Looking after your pearly whites can reduce the risk of contracting illnesses such as diabetes and dementia. Flossing is also important. If, like me, you find working with strands of floss too difficult, there are sticks and interdental brushes which get the job done, perhaps even better than the standard stuff. But we can't do everything ourselves. A good dentist is hard to find, and I'm lucky to have been in the care of Dr. Jason Burns for more than 20 years. Bye. Hello, thank you. I'm alright, yes, how are you? Dentists have had to adapt to a new way of working in the face of the pandemic. I caught up with Jason after my latest hygienist appointment at his White House Dental Clinic in Richmond, southwest London. We were certainly close to the first three months, Marcus, because there was a shortage of PPE and we couldn't get indemnified as a profession, so we weren't allowed to practice. But after the first three months, um, we decided to open, we could get indemnity, we were insured to, to look after our patients, and there was a very reasonable supply of PPE coming through, everything we needed. And so we opened up um, about the 8th of June and we've been open ever since and we've been very busy. Um, we now have totally different protocols to treat people. We use air filtration, we've got a, a, an air filtration unit here um, to make sure that the air is constantly being changed over and is being filtered. Jason said that after the first lockdown, patients drifted back and when they saw how much care was being taken with COVID safety, they felt quite comfortable. But I was interested to know what people should do to look after their teeth at home. It's, it's the basics. You need to obviously brush your teeth twice a day. You need to make sure that you're cleaning in between your teeth um, with either little brushes or dental floss. Little brushes are easier. I always remind patients that 35% of their teeth are actually in betweens, therefore if you're not cleaning in between your teeth, you're actually not cleaning a third of your mouth. And just avoid, you know, eating too much rubbish. You know, make sure that you're not eating too much too many sweets and biscuits and bits and pieces. And you know, that's probably about you know the best advice I can give. Okay. This might be a controversial one, but mouthwash. Before or after brushing? Uh, well it's a very interesting <laughs> question. Um, because the term halitosis was actually invented in the late 50s, early 60s by Listerine. And they invented the term halitosis and did a big advertising campaign. And then about six months later, lo and behold, they had the solution for it, which was Listerine mouthwash. So they created a problem people didn't realise they had, then they created a, a solution. Unfortunately, mouthwashes don't actually do very much. They have no real effect um, other than make your mouth feel a bit fresher and, and in the same way as you chew gum for bad breath, it, it's the same thing. They don't actually clean your teeth and they don't actually improve your, your, your general oral health. And Paul had a couple of questions for Jason as well. He was eager to know whether we should rinse after brushing. I don't think it makes a lot of difference. I don't think it makes a lot of difference, to be honest with you. I don't think that, you know, you're not, you haven't got enough toothpaste in your mouth to actually cause you any harm. I mean, if you okay. sort of swallow a whole tube of toothpaste, it's probably worth rinsing it out. <laughs> but um, if, if it's just, no, it doesn't, make, it doesn't make any difference. Because I think I read somewhere that if you rinse it out, you rinse out all the, all the ingredients that you try to input into your mouth. Yeah. So I don't know. So that's why I haven't been rinsing my mouth ever since I 
saw that on news on the news or something. But your saliva is going to wash most of that away. Okay, fine. Anyway. So it, it, it's okay. And I said, I don't think there's, I don't think there's enough good, I, you know. It, these sort of things get thrown about and they sound good in theory, but I think the actual practicality is doesn't make any it doesn't mm. make any difference at all. It's how well you brush your teeth. Yeah. You don't even need to use toothpaste. I mean if you brush if you it, it, it's the brushing that removes the things that damage your teeth, not the toothpaste. The toothpaste just makes it into a more pleasant experience. Well I'll certainly be putting more effort into my brushing technique. Before doing any exercise, it's always good to stretch in order to get your body acclimated to the exercise and to warm it up. Otherwise, you you will get hurt in that way. So just do some simple stretches and you're good to go. to eat as healthily as we can and perhaps a salad is the order of the day. So here's Paul cooking up something nutritious in the kitchen. I will be making a Wardorf salad today. In this salad there will be two apples. These are envy apples. We have one cup of celery that I have pre-sliced one cup of red grapes. You could use raisins if you have. And then we also have lettuce that I have chopped up in this bowl right here. I'm also going to heat up a cup of walnuts. I will pan fry them. I will roast them on the on the pan before mixing it all together. For the sauce, it will be six tablespoons of mayonnaise, a couple of teaspoons of lemon juice. Mix it with salt and pepper and then you have your Waldorf salad. So let's get started. I am roasting these walnuts and I will get started on chopping these and the apples for the salad. Okay, these are all chops now, so I will be making the mixture for the Waldorf salad. So now I am going to add some of this mayonnaise. Now let's put some of this lemon juice in without getting any of the pips. And let's salt and pepper this. Now to this, I will add apples. If you don't want to use mayonnaise, you could use yogurt. Greek yogurt is fine. So I really want to get all this coating in 
Now let's add the grapes. And the celery. So the apples and the celery will give it a crunchy flavor to it, a crunchy texture to it. So these walnuts look nice and roasted now. So I will add them to the apple, grape, and celery mixture. So this is hot now, so we should use a whisk or a spatula of some sort. So now we mix, mix, mix. So this is my bed of lettuce that I was telling you all about. So now when you are happy that you've coated everything, then you just pour this straight into the lettuce bowl. And there you have, so let's just do that right now. Oh wow, this is a lot of salad. This will make a lovely dinner or lunch. So there you have it, a nice wardrobe salad with apples, grapes, celery, walnuts, and let us, of course. We'd love to know what you'd like to see on the show. So tweet us or email us. You can catch us on TikTok. Three adults say they don't get enough sleep on a regular basis. For some, this just leaves them feeling a little sluggish the next day. But for others, it can be more serious. Long-term sleep deprivation can lead to illnesses such as diabetes, coronary heart disease and stroke. For most, it's not that they don't want to sleep. It's that they can't get to sleep or keep waking up. I have suffered from insomnia most of my adult life. Uh, oh, well, it's about 20 past 2 in the morning, and it's a Monday night, Tuesday morning, and uh, I'm sitting up late again. This is normal for me, because the thing is, if I go to bed at what is the, most people probably think is a normal time. I'm just going to lie there. I'm going to toss and turn. And I'm not going to sleep. So I end up sitting up till half past two, three, sometimes half three in the morning. Especially on work nights. Because I don't start work till quarter past two in the afternoon. But then I, I want to get up in the morning to actually enjoy part of the day. Then I can't get up. So I don't know what the answer is. All I do know is, is I sit here yawning and sometimes I'll be watching the TV late at night and my eyes are closing for hours. Midnight ticks by, one o'clock, two. Yeah, if I was to go to bed I just would not fall asleep. I'd be wide awake. It's frustrating. I try using aromatherapy bath products and a white noise sound machine to help me sleep. But what else can we do? 
Changing our habits is one way we can try to improve our sleep. I'm going to try to follow these medically recognized tips. Don't drink caffeine later than 4 p.m. if you intend to go to bed before midnight. Avoid alcohol before bed. It might send you drifting off, but you're more likely to be wide awake in the wee small hours. Limit screen use before bed. So switch off the TV and read a book instead. Certainly don't use your cell phone in bed and make sure you dim house lights for an hour before sleeping. Your bedroom shouldn't be too hot or too cold. Find a comfortable temperature that relaxes you. And if you feel a sleep wave approaching, jump on board. That's a surefire sign you're tired and will fall asleep. If you really can't sleep, don't lie tossing and turning in bed. Get up, read a book or magazine, have a milky non-caffeine drink and try to sleep later. Please make sure that you see your GP if you think you have a serious sleep problem. Blepharitis is an inflammation of the eyelids. Even after receiving treatment, blepharitis doesn't disappear completely. If anyone's ever suffered from blepharitis, you will know that it's quite painful. I have it in my left eye right now. It's extremely red. It is red compared to the right hand side. So I am taking some chloral phenicol eye drops that are antibacterial. Hopefully this will make a difference. And also to help with easing the pain and making the blepharitis go away, um, I use a mask i heat it in the microwave for like about 10 seconds and then i use a q-tip to massage my eyelids followed by some normal eye drops and blephagel which is what i use to keep the eyelids coated and moisturized um but this chlorum phenicol i'm supposed to be using it for a week the first 48 hours every two hours and then afterwards every four hours you don't include the time when you're asleep so hopefully all these measures will help ease the pain and make this blepharitis go away um blepharitis means dry eye and it's when your eyelids are inflamed and it could get worse and it could lead to major headaches, so it's best to get it treated. It has been 48 hours since I've started taking chloramphenicol, which is the antibacterial eye drops. So I phoned my surgery today and I managed to get an appointment for 3.20 this afternoon, the doctor will see me and hopefully I could get some resolution to this eye infection. I don't know whether this is blepharitis. It could be something different. But I think it's important to get it checked out because it is your eye and it is painful. And I think that there is... In my eye, I think there is some discharge coming out of the left eye. So I just want to make sure that it's under control and that it's not more serious than I thought. It's been a week since I started feeling some discomfort in my eye. It turns out that it's not blepharitis and that it is in fact an eye infection 
So I need to continue using the Chlorum Phenacol four times a day and hopefully the redness and the irritation will go away. So maybe just two more days of treatment and then I should be fine again. Overnight, my eye condition worsened. I phoned 111 and the consultant advised me to go to the hospital immediately. Well, I have made it to the Western Eye Hospital outside Baker Street on Marlebone Street and I need to get my eye checked out. When I received the call back from the consultant, she said that it doesn't seem to be blepharitis or an eye infection and that it could be something more serious. So I've made it here and they close at 8.30. So let's see what happens. Well, I have just come out of the Western Eye Hospital. Um, what I have is marginal keratitis. It's a part of the blepharitis family. Um, so they say that it's not caused by bacteria, so it's sterile. They have prescribed me with steroids with an antibiotic mix to it. So hopefully that will help. We'll see. They prescribed me Cobra's X, which helped with my marginal keratitis, which is a form of blepharitis, which is the inflammation of your eyelids when the tear ducts become clogged and then that's what causes the pain and the redness. But this medication has helped and yes, I hope no one has to go through this because it is quite painful, especially not knowing what the cause of it is. So if you do have any issues with your eyes, it's best to go see your doctor and get some advice there. Well, Paul, I bet you're relieved that your eye trauma is well and truly over now. Yeah, I think that it took longer than I would have liked, but I'm glad that it's finally going away right now. And for me, it's always good to make a trip to the dentist. Um, we've really got to look after our teeth. Well, they do say that Guinness is good for you. I believe that. So, cheers everyone. See you next time. <laughs>